Mori, good morning. Praise the Lord, Lady Fatty. Give the blessing to me in the house. Amen. And good morning for those that was watching Facebook Live. Amen. 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 So before we go with the prayer, we are in our first Sunday of the month of April. Woo! Amen. Yeah, the Lord is good. So, if you guys are at home, you guys can just take a moment to go to grab your uh, piece of bread or crackers or some juice because we are going to get ready to prepare to have communion. Amen? Amen. So as the communion is being passed, I want to take a moment and read the scripture, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 22 to 26. And I'm reading the Amplified Version. And it says, For I received from the Lord himself that instruction which I pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the right in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he, when, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This represents my body which is offered as a sacrifice for you. Do this in a affectionate remembers of me. In the same way, after seven, he took the cup, saying, this cup is new covenant, rectified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink, as you drink it. In affection, remembers of me. For every time you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of the Lord death until he comes again. So before we take partake of the bread and of the wine, just take a moment to visualize what the Lord has gone through for us to be able to uh, part to take to partake in this. What he has done on the cross and how he died, how he was whipped and how he was bruised. Just for us to have life life right now where we are at. Ain't that, ain't that something? Yeah. He didn't have to do it. Yeah. He did not have to do it. Amen. 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 So as we take a moment, let's take off the top of the bread. Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, your God, we just want to say thank you, Lord God, for allowing us <clears throat> to celebrate for who you are, Lord God, for allowing us to partake of the bread and the wine, to allow us to have a conscious re reminder of who you are and what you have done for us on the cross, Lord God. And also in preparation of this week, leading up to Easter, Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord God, for the sacrifice that you did not have to do, how you laid down your life for us, Lord God, so that we can have a chance to commune with you, Lord. Father, my you right now, Lord God, begin to have your way and this it on today like never before, Father God. We thank you right now for a new covenant which you have allowed that we are allowing us to partake in, Lord God. I'm asking you right now, Lord God, to, to begin to do something new within the atmosphere, Lord God. Not within within the building, but outside of the building, Lord God. Even inside the home. Shift the atmosphere right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Shift the mindset, Lord God. And shift whatever's inside of us that's not like you to remove it right now, yes, Lord God. God. Remove every hurt, every negativity. I come even get the spirit of the pressure right now that somebody may be going through, Lord God. I'm asking right now that you begin to minister to every heart right, right, right where they may be, Father God. Meet the need of your people, Lord. I'm asking right now, God, you begin to uh, 
be with uh this is the last you know this morning Lord God yes. teach his way to go forth and, and worship Father God. Let there be a new sound yes. within her God and a bunch of new songs of Father. As she begin to sing Father God, let there be our uh, deliverance go forth, let there be miracles go forth. Let your power ascend in this house like never before God. Just begin to meet us Father. Yes. Even I pray right now even for Pastor James that he gets ready to come forth with a mighty word for us Father God. And give him, give him fresh name, a fresh fire and a new and a new language that she begin to speak it out into atmosphere that we begin to uh to be to take part of the word of God that we may to share unto our dear Father. We just want to say thank you, O God, for the getting ready to do for such a time as this. And we thank you for who I am. Thank you for being our ever father and just loving us and um strengthening us from day to day. And have your way on today, Father. We give your name all honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. I want to invite you to join me in standing as we worship together. Amen. I want to read a scripture really quickly uh, for you to keep in mind as we sing um, today and worship our Lord. All of our songs today are all about chasing after God and following after God. Amen? Yes. And Psalm 63 and 8 says, My soul followed hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. There's another scripture that talks about um, when we seek him, we will find him. And so today I want to encourage you to seek the Lord like never before, to chase after yes. his very presence and to get what you need. Amen? Amen. Yes. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we love you. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for pursuit this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you for your presence, oh God. Wonderful God, you are coming. Let's worship the King of Kings. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're following you to glory. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful God, you are.
out to you. I'll be chasing out to you. And I will go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And I will go, and I will go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, and I'll forever be chasing after you, I'll be chasing after you, I'll be chasing after you, God we thank you so much. Yes. You are worthy pursuit, oh God. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. You said and you promised, God, that those who seek you will find you. And so, Father, today we, we continue to seek God outside of our worship, God, even as we continue to tithe and as we continue to receive, God, your word, God, on today, your preached word, Father, we thank you. Hallelujah for the reminder of the pursuit of your presence, oh God. God, we thank you for your very presence here. We pray that you will continue to speak to us, oh God, and we pray that we would find you, God, even as the word is preached and as it goes forth, Father. God, not just our questions about life, not just our questions about next steps, not just our questions about promises and answers, but Lord, we thank you for pursuit of you. Yes. We thank you for your very presence. Yes. We thank you, God, for your face before your hand, oh God. Yes. In the name of Jesus, God, that's what we want. We want your face, oh God. And so, God, we thank you for what you're about to do in this place, oh God. We thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. God, we thank you for transformation God, through your word, oh God. We thank you, God, for seeing your face, your panim, God. Today, God, preach through your word, God. So we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we ask you to continue to have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning. Before Pastor James comes to bring the message, I'm like, hey, Pastor, you preach less. Pastor, you preach less. So, yeah. No. But, <laughs> I just want to share. I shared it in um, prayer this morning, and so I want to share it now. And that is that the Lord is saying this is a time He's calling us for a renewal of the covenant. Come on. So I want to read what I have written because I wanted to make sure I gave you what the Lord said. So this is Joshua 1 and 1. It says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's disciple, God spoke to Moses' assistant, whose name was Joshua, the son of Nun, and said to him, now that my disciple is dead, you are the new leader of Israel. Lead my people across the Jordan River into the promised land. The Lord reminded me that the people of Israel had wandered and wandered around for 40 years. Now, we know they were there because of their disobedience, but they had wandered into a certain age of people had died off. And the reason that God said many of us have been wandering, it has not always been for sin, but some of our wandering has been because God said that old you, that old self, that complaining and grumbling and not trusting self had to die so that the new you that's going into promise could live. And he said it is time to cross over into the promised land. And so the Lord said there were some things that had to happen. There were some things that need to happen in us as we step over into these promises. He said there there's some cleansing that needs to happen. He said, well, he said it this way. He said, we need to get rid of our idols. He said, we need to put on our garments. He said, and then we need to worship him in a new way. And so for the next three months in prayer, if you can get here at nine o'clock, I, I suggest you do. Uh, for the next three months, we are going to be really digging in. God said, it's time for us to do some work. Say work. work. So God said this. So for the month of April, the assignment is uh, what idols do you need to get rid of? And we may instantly think of some little statue, but that may not be your idol. If you're self-sufficient and won't trust in nobody, that is your idol. You are your idol. God said if you are, if when you get stressed, you got to turn to food or substance or, or sex or anything else outside of him, all of that is your idol. He said, so bring it down. It's got to fall. If even disbelief, even if doubt, 
guess what? That can become your idol because you go to that first when you don't go to God's promises. So the Lord said, we must get rid of our idols. He said, so set aside some time this week to come and ask him, what is your idol? Ask him what is standing in the way of you being able to do everything he's called you to do. He said, and once he shows you, we got to repent. And he said, once you repent, he said, then it is time for us to begin to ask him to give us the strategies so that we no longer walk in that sin. We no longer walk that that idol is in control. Because I want y'all to understand something. Our father says to us that he has a great promise for us. Because one of the things, that, I'm going to read this other scripture, Genesis 35, 2-5 through says, So Jacob instructed all those in his household to destroy the idols they brought with them and wash themselves to Put on fresh clothes, for we are going to Bethel, he told them, and I will build an altar there to the God who answers by prayer in the day of my distress and, and was that um, of my distress and was with me on my journey. So they gave Jacob all their idols and their earrings and they, he buried them beneath the oak tree near Shechem. Then they started out again and the terror of God was upon all the cities they journeyed through so that they were not attacked. God said, if you do what I tell you to do, the glory is going to be so prevalent in our lives uh, that others would tremble and be fearful of messing with you. Why? Because God has put his seal upon you. So God says, get rid of your idols. And even the thing that they said, their earrings, that stood out to me. God said, I don't want you to, I want you no longer wearing your idol like a garment, uh, like an accessory. So it's time to take them off. If you got any questions, if you need some help, we are available, Pastor James and I, but this month, we're going to be tearing down the idols. Amen? Amen. All right, Pastor James, come on and preach. That was just my mini preach, y'all. That was my mini preach. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the mini preach. Yes. yes. Pastor James here, grateful for the opportunity to stand before you. You know, something just dawned on me. Uh, for those, um, welcome for those on the E campus and those who hear this on delay. Um, something just dawned on me that I just wanted to illustrate in, in a tangible way. So for those that are in the house, they can see on, on the screen, there's a, there's a link, there are three links, and they're all like a chain, they're all linked together. So I'm gonna ask Apostle Jewel, they don't know about this, and I'm gonna ask Minister Leslie to come up here on the pulpit with me, because I want us to lock arms so we can give a visual, okay. amen. Amen. Please, impromptu. Impromptu, so <laughs> hold your hands. So these three are linked together. So we are unmovable. And the title of today's message that the Lord gave me was Peace, mm -hmm. Position, mm -hmm. and Power. Amen. Say it with me. Peace, Peace position, position, and power. power. Thank you very Amen. much. Amen. 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 And I, I, and I did that because, you know, sometimes we, we get a peace. P-I-E-C-E -E of the word or a piece of what the Lord is saying and, and, and we need to connect that mm -hmm. to something. Amen. And so I really just want to real, real simple, straightforward, just want to connect those peace, position, and power. Amen. And so even before we dive into this, um, I'm going to come one of the questions that, that the Lord um, ask me and, and at, by extension is asking you is are you in position? Amen. Are you in position? Hmm. Come on. And one of the scriptures, the central scripture that I want to share today is Matthew 21 and 9. Matthew 21 and 9. And so what I'm going to do just to give you a quick overview I'm going to share the prophecy of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the donkey, amen, and then share a, a, a passage from Revelation because the first time Jesus came, Prince of Peace, in peace. The second time he comes, he's in power. And, and, and so we, as humans, are kind of bound by the time. We think that, okay, before, middle, and end. But Jesus is already in power. His spirit is already available to you so that you have the power that you need 
amen, to even follow through on the assignment. Jesus and the Holy Spirit is going to be the one that's going to let you know what idol it is that needs to be torn down, amen, and the Spirit will be the tear downer. I know that's not a word, but it will crush whatever it is that's trying to come between you and the Son of God. Amen. Praise God. So peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, is how Jesus came into the world. And peace, humble and low. He wasn't trying to be ostentatious the way our society wants us to be, puffed up. Stuck on our ego. Yeah. It's all about me, myself, and I. Hmm. That was even a rap record. <laughs> and it's also the false trinity, as Apostle Jewel has shared on many, many occasions. So P E A C E, peace, position, Come on. and power. Amen. He came in peace, but Jesus knew what his position was. He knew that he was the Son of God, he knew that he was. The king of kings, amen? amen? Just like we need to know, when we say yes to him, mm -hmm. we are his children. Yeah. Thank you. We can be peacemakers. Yes. But by our identity, by our position, we have the power of God within us to be used as he has called for us to use it. Are you in position? Amen. And then finally what I'll do is I'll share what position looks like, what being in position looks like, ultimately how that connects to you being a peacemaker, but also one empowered by God. So let's look at those scriptures. The first is Zechariah 9.9, 9, and I'll read in the New Living Translation. Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look! Your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, hmm. riding on a donkey's colt. 500 years before Jesus rode in, the Lord inspired Zechariah to foreshadow what was to come. Again, God is not bound by our time. We need to understand, just like they were, were mindful and heard the prophecy and spoke with thus saith the Lord as the prophecy comes to you and as you have an opportunity to steward that prophecy, amen know that that is your right, know that that is what God has invested in you second scripture first coming Jesus, Matthew 21 and 9 in the King James Version reads, and the multitudes went before him that followed and cried, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Huh. Yes, sir. A multitude. They had heard about Jesus. Some had, some had seen Jesus. They knew that where he went, there was healing. Where he went, there was salvation. Where he went, there was order. Where he went, there was power. Where he went, God was because he was the Lord in flesh. Mm -hmm. So there was a multitude of folk just like nowadays. Sometimes, maybe not for the right reason, but we have multitudes mm -hmm. that follow. Multitudes that worship. Amen. Lord, help us not to have a false idol that needs to be torn down. Multitudes that will say yes. Some will say yes is Jesus. Some will say yes is you fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And this month, we're going to tear down anything. If that blank doesn't have Jesus in it, oh. ah, crush. But there were multitudes. And just like at that time, if you remember, they were Hosanna in the highest. And then it was crucify him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like today. Used to be my homie, now you act like you don't know me. <laughs> Same human nature in action today. Yeah. But thank God the same spirit that allows you to stay in position will give you the power to overcome, to cut through the lies, to cut through the darkness, to cut through anything that might stand in the way 
of what God has ordained for you to do. So even as you come in peace, come in in peace, positioned as a child of God, recognize that when the Holy Spirit empowers you to do something, go forth. Amen. Don't be afraid. Do it. Amen. Because the second coming, as we look at the last body of scripture, Revelation 19, 11 in the New Living Translation, and just, just a little bit of context, though, so, um, you know, John the Revelator was, was seeing what was to come, was seeing how Jesus was already on the throne, was seeing and making plain for them who he was and what he was empowered to do. He says, then I saw the heaven opened and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and rages, wages, amen, a righteous war. Can we say a righteous war? Because we are in a righteous war and we need the peace that passes all understanding and the position and identity for us to be clear in our mind, body, and spirit so we have the power to hold our post and move forward in the righteous war that we have been blessed, amen, amen. to participate in. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, the first coming Jesus came in peace. The donkey was even a symbol of peace. It was what many of the exalted ones would use as a coming into a place. We're here in peace. We come to be a peacemaker. Jesus was coming to really manifest and fulfill the prophecy that had already been said 500 years before. And so I just want you to think about what has been spoken over your life, hmm. what has been poured into you? What is the Lord through either his spirit or using an instrument of God? What has he prophesied to Come be on. your portion? What is that? Hmm. What is that? Because once you get an understanding and, and, and start to, to allow that prophecy to soak down into your spirit, to be part of your identities, part of your part of your 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 um, um your makeup, part of what is part of your character, part of who you are in God, amen, then that begins to position you so that you are on the post that God has called for you to be on. Mm -hmm. You are in fellowship with who he's called for you to be in fellowship with. Mm -hmm. You have access to provisions that he has already placed in order for you to, not so much find, but to discover, to, 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 to access, amen, to access. And then of course, by virtue of your child of God, status and position, now you have access to the comforter. You have access to that power. You have access to that same spirit that Jesus said would be the one that would open up avenues, move you through situations, give you wisdom in order to apply what thus saith the Lord. So let's just talk about wisdom. Amen. So when we think about peace, position, and power, um, I love math, and so when I see three P's, I'm like, oh, that's P to the third power. That's, that's, <laughs> that's P cubed. <laughs> um, but, but, but essentially, this peace, position, and power is attained as you continually seek. That's good. Seek. What do we worship today? We're chasing after you, Lord. Yeah. yeah. I'm chasing after you. Yeah. Seek. But once you get there, you got to use it. Amen. Mm -hmm. You have to use the wisdom. And so think about wisdom as practical application of biblical principles. Yeah. Wisdom, the practical application of biblical principles. And what I want to remind you of, just like we stood here, arms locked together, they are all linked because, and I'll, I'll touch on this, 
you can have, as we talk about principles and practical application, you can have a piece, a P-I-E-C-E -E of it, but if it's not connected mm -hmm. to who you are in the Lord, if it's not connected to your position as a child of God, if it's not connected to the Holy Spirit that empowers you, sometimes it can mm, be an idol. Sometimes it can cause you to go off the rails. It can call you to a place that you don't need to be, a mindset that you don't need to have, taking actions that aren't what God has ordained. Amen. So it's practical application of biblical principles. It's not just practical application by itself. And it's not just biblical principles because I know it in my head because I read it yesterday. <laughs> Faith without works is dead. Practical application, if it's not connected to biblical principles, can lead you astray. Come on. So let's break that down. A principle is a fundamental truth, fundamental, basic, fundamental, it's just like bedrock that serves as the foundation for a system of, and these three things, a system of belief, mm -hmm. which you, behavior, or a chain of reasoning. So belief, mm -hmm. what you think is true, because sometimes what we think and what we feel may not be true. Right. How you act, your behavior, what, what, what shows up, sometimes it's the great things of God that show up. I'm connecting in love. I have a pure spirit. I'm reaching out to where God has called me. Other times my behavior might be dependent upon a trigger of some sort mm -hmm. that I have learned to respond to in a way that is unhealthy at best, unholy at worst. Come on. And then the third piece, a chain of reasoning. How you actually perceive, how you understand things to be, and then what you do with that understanding and information. It's like, oh, if this, then that. If you hit, well, that's probably not the best example, um, but a chain of reasoning, how you kind of process and make decisions. Amen. What you think is true, how you act, and how you make decisions. Amen. And you can have a piece, P-I-E-C-E -E, of those, without them all being connected, and it can be problematic. That's why I'm breaking it out, teasing it out, but ultimately they need to be pulled together. Yeah. Because a practical person is one who is concerned with the actual doing or use of something rather than the theory, hmm. you know, or, or the idea. It's like, no, what, I'm just going to do it. I feel it, I'm going to do it. I'm just, I, I'm good at it. That's, that's one of our potential idols. I'm so good at this, I'm just going to do it. Not connected to a biblical principle, just connected to I'm so good at it, or they told me I was so good at it, or they are, they just, oh my goodness, I can't believe you sing so well, you do that so well, you just so, mm. and, and while they're saying that, if you are starting to ride the wave of puffery, <laughs> you will be all up here like, yeah, I'm going to do this. No connection to, did God say that is what you should be doing? And is the motivation appropriate That's for a holy, holy, holy mind? And is it just, man, they like it, I'm going to get paid doing that. <laughs> so a practical person, one who's concerned about doing it or the use of it, of something, rather than the theories or ideas, and in this sense, we're talking about biblical principles. And then application, very closely related. It's like they, they it, it's just the application of putting something into operation. It's like I hear it, I understand it, my reasoning, and, and then I put it into operation. Amen. Because we are all, to some extent, um, application artists. Mm. We learn something, then we do it. Mm -hmm. We learn and then we do. And, and, and I just want to bring us back to, you can, you can learn things very hard or easy. It may take long or short. The question is, when you learn that, is that application, is that how you put it into action, something that God has ordained? Is it something that he's leading you to? Because 
just like we can be good at something kind of intuitively. Some people say, oh man, they were just born with that. They inherited that. They, you know, so, um, this happens a lot with athletes um, or singers or, or other individuals. Like, man, they just inherited the, the, what they call good genes. They got the good genes. <laughs> And you can put that label on any. They got the good genes with a good hair. They got the good genes with a good body. They got the good genes with this and the other. And that may be true. The question is, how are they using that? How are they putting that into action? How has God said, okay, I have actually created everything that you thought about. <laughs> I created you and who created you. And you were created for me to worship me. And part of that worship as you get peace in your position and access the power of God is by turning it back over to him. Amen. So let me just wrap this up with a few concrete examples. As we think about peace, position, and power, the PQ, you know, in position looks like a couple of things. And then when you are in position, peace and power look like a couple of things. So first of all, being in position looks like you being prayerful. Uh -huh. And that's the two-way prayerful, not the gimme, 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 because you got, it's the, Lord, what is it that you need me to know about yeah. you? What is it that you need me to know about myself? And then what is it that I need to know about the pathways, the destiny, and the, 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 the routes and the, and the places that I need to go? How can I stay connected because Jesus was ever prayerful. Yeah. Fully connected. So his peace and power look like being connected to the Father. Amen. That's our model. Yeah. Our prayerful conversations on an ongoing basis connects us to God's peace, his power, his his every every good gift, every good and perfect gift. Amen comes from the Father of Lights. So being in position looks like being prayerful, prayerful, prayerful. Mm -hmm. And in those conversations with the Lord, as He directs you, as He corrects you, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> as He molds and shapes you, as He is informing you, amen, the next task is yours. Mm -hmm. And it's obedience. Mm -hmm. Will I follow? Oh, Lord doesn't want me to do what I have been accustomed to doing. Come on. I really, really like this, but God has directed me to move in a different way. My, his question to us and my question, his question to me and us is, is will we be obedient to his calling, to Come his on. word? And then the cousin of obedience is humility. Because being obedient puts you in his will. If you have a, a spirit of humility, what that does is it gives it, it, it opens you up to learning. Mm -hmm. And the way I define learning, the way God put impressed it upon me is like, yeah, you can read. I know you read English, you can understand the words. <laughs> the question is, after that understanding, how do you marry up obedience and humility? To actually change. Come on. To actually say, you know what, I used to think this, I, I just used to think that all the time. That was my truth, that was my life, that was in my DNA, that's what I learned. That's what I was all about. God is going to challenge us. Mm -hmm. And we need to be open to learning. And learning by learning exhibits itself or manifests itself in change. Yeah. And so as God is, is opening you up and, and sharing with you in prayer and you, you say, yes, Lord, all that you say I will do, and you have a humble heart and you're like, okay, I'm going to be able to change. I, you know, don't, don't change ten things at once, Lord. Give me the care of this <laughs> You know, because I have people that know. God, woo, Jesus. Then it's a, it's a matter of just ongoing faithful. I, I think faithfulness to me manifests itself and looks like consistently following. Yeah. Consistently, consistently going back. And, and, and it's consistently going back even when things just don't look, man, right? 
I've been, <laughs> I didn't did whatever, 600 workouts and it just don't seem like, <laughs> I don't really see the results. Lord, help me increase my faith, yeah. amen, because without faith it's impossible to please God, oh, yeah. the Lord. Yes, yes. So faithful, that consistent, like, okay, I'm hearing you, Lord. I, everything you say, I, I'm, I'm open to learning, I'm gonna be, and I'm going to be faithful because we, with our eyes, <clears throat> or with our senses, whatever ones you use, we always make a judgment. It's like, man, I don't know. If, <laughs> man, we've been doing this, but uh, I ain't seeing the results because we are a very results-oriented society. Yeah. We are, we are trained to see results. If I do this, then that. I want to see the out with outcomes oriented. Amen? Amen. But God is process oriented because he has already won the battle. He's already won. He already knows where you're going. He already knows what you're going to go through. He's already there to help you through it while you were at right the emotional tidal wave. He's the one that's going to give you peace. Yeah. Because that peace manifests itself in a couple of different ways. It manifests, it manifests itself first off in clarity. Yeah. Just to kind of put a double click on peace. Because the opposite of that is kind of confusion and chaos, which when we look at circumstances, confusion and chaos are not clarity. Mm -hmm. Clarity allows you to say, you know what, okay. Right. And, and it's okay, not with the like, okay, I'm going to deal with it. Oh, it was like, okay, Lord. Okay, Lord, let me let me get my attitude right. Let me let me get you know because we can be you know, trudge around. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna talk to them. I'm gonna pray for them. But uh, no, it's okay. Yes, Lord, this is the right attitude. Peace, peace yeah. comes with the right attitude. That's good. Yes, it does. Amen. 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 And so as you get in, you're in dialogue. You, you yes, Lord, I'm gonna do what you call for me to do. I'm humble. I'm gonna be. I'm listening. I'm learning. If things don't look right for my eyes, Lord, help me to see things through your eyes, amen, because that's going to be pleasing to you, Lord. Yeah. Because right now, I have to, what we call in the corporate sense, you have to be ready for change. Come on. Everybody's not ready for change, and, 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 and the Lord is always on the positive change. We deal with a lot of change that's negative. Sometimes everybody can probably think about a time, oh, that changed, but it wasn't good. That situation, they called me into this situation. We got a new change coming through, but it wasn't fruitful. God is always calling you to a fruitful change. That's He's right. always calling you to a positive change. Amen. And what we have to do is kind of kick back. Okay, Lord, I said I'm going to be faithful. That means I'm going to believe you, even though it doesn't look the way I want it to look or the way I expected it to look. Because we always, well, let me just prove I always have an expectation of what something's going to look like. Yeah. Oftentimes, what the Lord has called for me to do, and, I, and this might not be anybody else's challenge of having an expectation of anything, but what he's called for me to do is hold those loosely. Because mm. wow. I, I, I got expectations. I'm a, <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a human being. I do the work. I want this. What do we preach about? Uh, um, 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 Laban. Uh, <laughs> No. Um, oh, I'm blanking on, on the, um, the name of the individual that worked for seven years for, um, Lord help me. Anyhow, we have expectations. It'll come to me later after I'm finished. <laughs> we have expectations and we have to hold them loosely. Mm -hmm. It's like, Lord, yeah, I know I'm, I'm looking for this in two months, but I got to put this in your hands. Yeah. We got to hold them loosely and give them to the Lord. And that helps us be what I call a readiness for positive change. Mm -hmm. Amen. And guess what? God will grow you. Yeah. God will grow you. When you are ready for positive change, God will grow you. Some people look at whoever their leaders are and say, oh, they're stretching me. <laughs> I'm, I'm one inch. They're stretching me to three. I've, I've been doing two. Now they want me to do ten. Why? 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 It's because God is growing you. Hallelujah. God is growing you. I'm almost finished. There are only two more pieces. Being in position looks like having a, 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 a an attitude and 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 this is really this is the cousin of faithfulness, an attitude that perseveres or is persistent. Amen. Lord, I've been praying for this for five years. <laughs> I'm back at the altar. 
Lord, I need this. Yeah. The beauty of that is that over time, in and I, and this is the piece. Usually, when we say over time, it's over my time. It's over my calendar. The fact is, it's in God's time. So I, I love that term, um, God's speed, mm -hmm. because just like expectations, we have our own kind of like, okay, I think I knocked this out in about six months. Okay. <laughs> God probably like looking at you like, okay, I mean, you, you human, you can have an expectation. At the same time, you might not, you might be going at God's speed. He might have to, he might have a few lessons that might take a year, maybe two. For you to learn but but the beauty is it's God's timing you on his road that's right he's gonna reward you and you're gonna be successful Lord. in his time amen so amen. thank God Praise for God level success amen. he's the one yes. that gives you the peace where are you in position and the power to persevere the last point I have and then we'll go to prayer is being in position looks like being planted. Mm -hmm. That's good. Planted. And I want to make a distinction here. Come on. Being in position in the Lord's kingdom is being planted. Unmovable. Come on. It's blowing. The wind is blowing. I'm flexible. Come on. I'm age agile. Oh, they do that dark? God got me. <laughs> Come on, <Planted>. right. <laughs> Planted. Yeah. Planted. The distinction I want to draw is there's a difference between, between being planted in God's kingdom, steadfast and unmovable, and being stuck. Come on. That's, That's good. good. <laughs> because That's stuck good. Come on. means that I'm stuck in my ways. Yeah. Come on. I'm stuck in how I feel thought about that situation. Wow. I'm stuck in what they said. Come on. I'm stuck in these circumstances that through my natural eyes, I just can't see the yeah. answer. Yeah. Come on. I'm stuck in the way they hurt me. Mm. I'm stuck in the fact that I hurt them and them and them. I'm stuck. Come on. Woo. Because what God is calling for, as he thinks about you and loves you, is that you are unstuck but planted. Yeah. Unstuck. Yeah. I'm not stuck in what they said. I'm not stuck in even what I thought. I'm not stuck yeah. in what the circumstances look like. I'm not stuck. In an old mindset, I'm not stuck to that person who I was in unholy relationship with. I'm not stuck in that situation that I didn't cause, but I was born into. I'm not stuck in anybody's ideas about me because God has me in position as a child of God so that I have the peace of God on one hand and the spirit flowing through me that raised God from the dead for power on the other hand. Come on, Jesus. Peace of God yeah. in position and planted in the kingdom has you rooted in what God and who God is and who you are in God such that the other parts of the power of the Holy Spirit can be manifested in you and through you Come on. to wherever God is sending you. Yeah. Because we're saved to serve. Yeah, yeah. We're saved to move. Hmm. Planted. Planted. Looks like being rooted in God. It was peace with equal access to his power. Huh. Say it with me. Peace, Peace. Position, position, and power. power. Let God's spirit minister to you today and each and every day that he is calling you yeah. to peace, calling you into your position. 
calling you into power. And I submit and invite you that when you see anything that's not calling you to prayer, that's not calling you to obedience, that's not calling you to have a humble heart and a spirit, to not, that's not calling you to continue your faithful service, amen, that's not calling you and, and, and is feeling like it's pulling you to the stuck places where you're not ready for positive change and to grow, that's calling for you to be inconsistent and to give up and throw in the towel, yeah. that's calling you out of the ark of safety that God has called for you to be in. Those are your signals. And I pray that as the signals come up, it's like, bam! I'm getting back the peace of God. I'm in position. I'm going to access whatever, what, I'm going to access the appropriate manifestation of the Holy Spirit to combat, to fight my battle, yeah. to encourage me, to strengthen me, to move me forward. Because as you accept God's peace and you position yourself, he will be the engine, the power Hallelujah. that you need, both for salvation, sanctification, deliverance, and healing. Yeah. It's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. So I just want to remind us <laughs> that if you have an offering, and you're in the sanctuary, you can feel free to drop it in the basket. And if you're on the e-campus, you can sow through the channels, the cash app and the zill that is pinned in the remarks. And I want to say a general prayer and then we want to open it up for prayer. Amen. That people personally request. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> I want to pray for the um, offering. Dear Father, we thank you, Lord, today. We thank you for provision, first and foremost, Lord. We thank you for provision and a cheerful heart, one that gives to the kingdom. And Lord, we pray for everyone that has an opportunity to be stewards over the resources, Lord, that they might be used for the continued upbuilding of your kingdom, Lord. Help us to know where to invest, how to invest, who to invest in and with. And help us, Lord, to build whatever it is that you say we need to reach your people for salvation and deliverance to lead an abundant life. Lord, help us to use them to equip the people of God to see you, build a relationship with you, and to be who you have called for them to be. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Lord, as I continue in prayer, <clears throat> Lord, I pray right now that you will speak to the hearts, minds, and spirits of each and every individual that has an opportunity to hear what you have ordained to be a portion of your word, a portion of the power, that they might be able today, Lord, even as they declare, I am a child of God and in our position, and have their character remade and, and, and shaped and molded into, into an image of God in which the way we were created, Lord, that you would give them peace, Lord, you will give them peace and clarity in every situation, Lord, the wisdom to understand that I can do what God has called for me to do because I have access to the Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Lord, and all things are not all things that somebody might say, but all things that you have ordained, Lord. Lord, help the ones that are hearing today, Lord, to see what are the focused areas that they need, amen, the Spirit to help them with, Lord, be it in their mind, be it in their, in their access to resources, be it in, their, in, in the ability, amen, to just worship you for who you are, Lord, and not look for a gift or something, but really to worship you for our, being our Father in heaven, being the one that created us, Lord, and has given us a mind, amen, that we might be able to worship you with everything that we are, Lord, because you created us to worship you. Lord, I pray right now that everyone that has an opportunity to hear from you, Lord, will see that they also have the opportunity to follow your Holy Spirit, that your Spirit can fill in gaps 
where there may be gaps. Fill in areas where there's darkness with light, Lord. Fill in areas where they may be weak, Lord, that they might have the strength, amen, to go forward. Today is a day of salvation for some, for, for deliverance for others, Lord, for encouragement for others, Lord, for healing for some. Even today, Lord, somebody's being healed by your spirit, Lord, because they opened up their cup and said, I need to hear from Jesus. I'm chasing after him and I want him to fill me. Lord, today I pray that your spirit fills the people of God for peace, for their character, their identity and position as a kingdom one and for the power that you have for them. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Peace, position, and power. Yes. Amen. That is your portion. Amen. amen.